Hello beer tubers and welcome to another beer review with me Peter the Master of Profits. Today checking out some Levy beer that's been in the cellar for quite a long time that I got from Lung. So thanks a ton to Lung for the beer. Uh, Lung is a long time follower of the channel. We've met quite a few times mainly for NBCC in Copenhagen and uh, I can't remember how many years ago now. Was it pre-COVID? It might have been. So it's like two or three years or what? I'm not sure now <laughs> when I got this beer, but he gave me a lot of bottles of Leerwijk's very first uh, Rec House beers. And this is the very first one. This is the Off the Rec number one, aged in Tennessee whiskey barrels, uh, and it's an Imperial Stout. So I'm guessing it's Jack Daniels barrels. 14.5% uh, best before 26. It's the says off the rack number one, set in wet Tennessee whiskey barrels for 11 months to absorb uh, coconut, vanilla, and dry spice aromatics from the slightly charred wood, which meld with the full sweet maltiness from the oat-rich imperial stout base. We left it unmolested to allow you to experience these nuances, which is awesome. They've done so many rack house beers since, loads of stuff, and lots of it has gotten lots of praise. And I even have the off the rack Paragon, 20 Paragon, I think. Now, one of the two, I think, had an infection. Um, I got a bottle, we'll see how it is, and I also got the new ones, the 21, and also the variant in maple bourbon barrels and the variant in rum barrels that sits in the cellar, along with the blue plate special, maybe, and the Black Forest Picante, I think they're called. So uh, more pastry-esque stouts. So it's from NBCC 2021 that I got this. So it's not that old. And this was released in 21 as well, I think around August or something. So it's been about two years in the bottle. So let's see how it is. I mean, you, sometimes big stouts without edgings or anything are pretty decent to age. Pastry, not so much. And we got some aged pastry still. <laughs> uh, but let's check this one out. So it pours a black color in the glass with a tan looking head. Um, didn't pour out like as fat as loads of modern stouts, but looks nice. Let's check out the aroma. Hmm? Yeah, some bourbon, lots of nuttiness as well, actually. <sighs> Spirit, warmth, caramel, toffee, fudge. It's kind of similar to something like Bourbon County, but a bit more nutty um, and not as bombastic and rich. Because you can also see on the like legs of the glass and whatnot, this is not like a crazy rich imperial stout. Um, but it doesn't have to be. It doesn't have to be syrup. I like it when it's also something like this. And like with barrel aged beer, what I really look for is like popping, expressive barrel character. And it's so different. Like also sometimes a lot of brewers will say, drink it really fresh. So you get that popping barrel character. There's definitely bourbony kind of fudgy notes. There's a bit of like charred wood and tobacco, chocolatey, charry, roasty. It doesn't smell super modernized, but somewhat. Like it's similar to something like Bourbon County, but there's definitely a little, maybe a bit more of a fudgy, caramelly aspect, but it smells really good. It's, yeah, it takes me back to something like Bourbon County or uh, 1050 or something like that. Let's give it a nice cheers. And thanks, Tongue. Too long for the beer. Sorry for the two year wait <laughs> for the review. Cheers. Holding up rather well, considering the age. It's quite dry though. It's definitely also drier than a Bourbon County, but some of the flavors are similar. Quite high effervescence too, actually. Lots of carbonation. Maybe a touch too much for its own good. Really tobacco heavy too. It's really held up in the cellar quite well. There's a bit of like a sharp dry bitterness and also a little bit of a tannic dry almost like dark fruity type nuance as well which could be age uh, but also quite roasty which is nice but there's just way too much carbonation i think it's really spritzy so i'm just gonna swirl it like crazy but yeah it's 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 similar to something like that like bourbon county or something also interestingly with the barrel kind of flavor it's not like that vibrant really caramelly it's like really there's definitely caramel and like vanilla and whatnot but it has loads of like old kind of charry wood as well much better it seems much more silky just when you swirl it you definitely so it's 
5% alcohol, you definitely sense that. It's definitely got some warmth going down, spirit warmth and drying, like it's like a dry warmth going down. Tobacco, charry, vanilla, slightly fudgy. It's quite nice. It's not blowing my mind. Uh, I will say that, like, um, compared to a lot of the stuff I've had in recent years, this is really nice, but it's not like where I'm like, just screaming of joy. Um, even though this, I think, is, was originally one of the highest rated rack houses, but it's fucking great. I mean, it's really good barrel aged beer. Really roasty, charry, burnt, assy kind of malt character but not in abundance. Like it's quite balanced, but I think that's also age. And then there's that, and then there's some f lots of fudge, which I think is the barrel, and then possibly also some caramel malts. They said it's also quite oat heavy. Maybe that's also part of the sweetness. It's not like really sweet, but there's a little bit. Tobacco, leathery, dark fruity, lightly, almost like a little bit of a salty licorice vibe. Um, yeah, it's, it's, I think something like the old school stouts like 1050 in Bourbon County and whatnot could be similarities, but I feel like this maybe is not as rich as those. At least Bourbon County I, is one I've had so many times. 1050, not so much barrel aged. Uh, a few times though, but it's, it's similar to that. Like really classic American barrel aged stout and it does it really well. I like it. And... Maybe if I had this two years ago, I'd be a bit more blown away. But having had loads of crazy stuff during the whole COVID period and just the last few years, um, I'm just not as blown away. But I'd be totally happy if this was something I brewed. And I think it's definitely worth a shot if you like barrel-aged beers. Um, but I don't think you can find this anymore. This is something, if you have it in the cellar, I think you should crack it now. I don't think it's something that's going to benefit from further aging. So just pop some and drink it as is. Um, as for a grade, I think straight 90. 91, uh, something like that, maybe even a 92, is pretty good. Um, it's really nice barrel aged beer. I'm just not like totally fired up. Of, of, and yeah, 90, I think. Like, I'm just not like really fired up. Like, I'd rather have like a Bourbon County, for example. I think that has more layers and more depth, but it's still really good. And it's, I think, for their first attempt at doing this uh, off the rack series, focusing on barrel aged beer, this is pretty good. Uh, so it'll be fun to see some of the others, and especially like. I think what they've done best in terms of barrels for sure at Debbie is Paragon. That's like one of the best body mines in Europe, uh, each in barrels. But it's good. It's fun to try. So, mm. if you guys had the chance to try Debbie's off the rack number one, let me know what you thought of it. And especially if you had it fresh in 21. <laughs> How was it? Let me know. Thanks a ton to Lung for the beer as well. And as always, make sure to comment, subscribe, check out the Facebook fan page, Twitter, and Instagram. Give the video a thumbs up if you enjoyed it, and ring the bell for future notifications about videos. And I'm going to say cheers and see you guys in another beer review.